Okay. Um, we are only 12 minutes late. I apologize for that. But first of all, I'd like to say welcome uh, to Super Slick Surfaces at Obergan Lectures. I'm very happy that you could make it, and I'm actually even shocked to see that there's only like two or three empty chairs left. Four. But still, uh, that's amazing. I'm, I'm really uh, impressed about uh, the interest um, in, in, in this uh, subject. So thanks a lot for coming, and I hope we can make it uh, worth your time. Um, before I start, I think I should uh, uh, thank some people, uh, apart from you guys, for coming. I need to, of course, thank uh, Overgan for uh, inviting me and giving me this opportunity to um, do some uh, uh, research, but also to bring together some people that I've been uh, looking at in the hope of trying to generate some answers to some of the questions that I have and hopefully also to develop some new questions uh, that we will be able to ask and to, uh, um, to think about this whole complex, what the internet uh, what technology is doing with us and doing with us, which is uh, like the overarching theme um, of this uh, conference. Um, some practical things first. Just so you know, the bathroom is downstairs at the far end, so if you don't have to, you know, walk around. Some people don't know where the bathroom is. Um, I just find it very securing to know where it is. Um, then uh, I, we have these uh, lecture programs where you can look up um, who's actually uh, speaking and uh, when there are coffee breaks. And when we have coffee breaks, there'll be some coffee and drinks as you might, as you might have observed in the, in the back over here. And there's actually another thing um, that will be different from, from the way these conferences work normally is um, that we're going to have uh, the, the conference is scheduled to run until about 8 o'clock and uh, afterwards you're invited to actually stay around. We'll probably need about uh, 10 minutes uh, to rearrange the space a little bit but then uh, you're invited to join us for, for a little bit of uh, food and some drinks and to, to have the opportunity to, you know, uh, speak to the speakers in a more uh, relaxed environment. So that's uh, what's on the menu uh, in, in general terms. Um, I, uh, well, I have two things, two other things uh, to announce before before I get started. One of the speakers um, who um, who was supposed to join us by uh, Skype. Uh, is uh, Marisa Olson, but unfortunately she's too ill, so she's not even well enough to join us by Skype, so she just had to say, well, I'm sorry, I can't do that and, and not be part of it. Which is a real pity, because uh, she um, she's a very important uh, start, starting point for this whole discussion that I hope we're going to have uh, today. But fortunately, we also have Toke Lückeberg here, who is a good friend of Marisa's and who's been in touch with her over a very long time. So Toke has spontaneously said, well, I know what she's saying. <laughs> well, let's see, we'll find out. <laughs> so, so Toke will take over some of Marisa's uh, part. But I'm, I, you know, like, I, will, I will give that away. I'm also using some of her, of her quotes and some, I'll, I'll be mentioning some of the things as well. So without much ado, um, I would like to quickly jump into, uh, you know, like my interests in, in putting together uh, this crowd uh, of speakers. Uh, and um, uh, my motivations, and then I will go on to uh, present uh, the speakers. Um, when, um, when uh, the Overgan team uh, approached me, to maybe work on this uh, conference uh, and uh, the, to, to, to reflect on the whole concept of post-internet art. The question of course came up like, why this terrible term, you know, where does it come from? Uh, uh, how can we transcend and get over this 
because in a sense, with something like the Berlin, or particularly with the Berlin Biennial uh, this year, uh, the, the whole idea of post-internet art has become, has reached a peak on, on that level that it has become uh, institutionalized, it's become part of, a, uh, of, of the people who are actually yeah, becoming major players in the system. Um, and that of course marks like a, a turning point uh, of, of how, how we deal with this. As, a, uh, as an idea, uh, the, the whole post-internet thing, one could say it's probably about uh, 10 years old. Um, there's a, a short statement from uh, Marisa, that's at the beginning of my talk, that uh, she uh, wrote about herself uh, when appointed editor and curator at Rizome, Rizome is a net-based magazine uh, which is um, um, which was an, well, a net-based uh, magazine, but also a uh, magazine focusing very much on uh, net-based art work. Um, and when uh, uh, based at the at the New Museum in New York. Um, when she was uh, appointed editor and curator there, she says, in 2005, my first agenda was to change the organization's mission, a mission statement, to assert its support of not only internet-based art, but all art that engages with the internet. And uh, that's a very simple statement, of course, but it makes a, it's, uh, uh, considering that it's like made in 2005, that's a different time smartphones basically weren't around at that time. The way you would use the internet was still very much one of, uh, of, of dialing up uh, with the computer. So the question was, uh, so how do you make this uh, statement, what art is kind of uh, engaging uh, with the internet? It's, it, sound, it must have sounded pretty geeky to actually formulate it uh, that way. But I think now, um, in, in my uh, uh, practical experience, you know, dealing with young artists, well, dealing with older artists, dealing with artists, dealing with art students, uh, writing about art, it's, uh, it, uh, you know, I cannot help but notice that my uh, way of dealing with art has just changed uh, dramatically. Uh, no, that's just only from my own experience as a, as a uh, writer and occasional uh, curator. Uh, and uh, artist that I will just conduct my research online. I will find uh, things online that I can then, you know, print out and use uh, in in, um, in different terms. I could copy paste stuff, and it's not. I, at some point, I realized my library card had run out, and uh, like two or three years ago, and I didn't even notice. So at some point I stopped going to the library apparently and I just found it uh, easier to uh, find stuff online. And actually I've been, as I've been writing for a very long time, I've, I had this huge collection of uh, magazines that I've written for. But at some point, you know, like when, when I wanted to check up on things that I've written before so I don't end up writing either the same thing again or the opposite, which is also probably not a Good idea, even if I'm the only one who really cares. But anyway, so instead of going to my shelf and dragging out that magazine, leafing through until I find the article that I wrote and reading it up, I can just hit Google search, and and then I will find it faster, and I don't have to leave uh, my chair. And that this way of uh, dealing with uh, everyday life, I mean, how how the internet has has uh, become such an integral part of um, working with nearly everything, of course this had some kind of influence um, uh, on the arts, but the idea of art that engages with the internet has just expanded incredibly. So now it's actually really difficult to imagine somehow, you know, art that's not engaged with the internet. Um, Uh, there's another funny term uh, called, um, again I'm quoting uh, Marisa, uh, I will just read this quote, Guthrie Lonergan spoke in a 2008 Rizome interview with curator Thomas Baird of 
internet-aware art, which he described as a way to take the emphasis to the internet and technology, but keep my ideas about them intact. The post-internet, she goes on to explain, the post-internet is a moment, a condition, a property, and a quality that encompasses and transcends new media. From here on, he called Guthrie Lonergan objects that aren't objects, i.e. a t-shirt or a book whose primary purpose is to be the vehicle of internet content. So this is actually like this kind of funny thing that's going on that, that, the, uh, that you, you have things uh, outside of the internet that kind of point at stuff that is online. But not only point about it, but become, you know, it, it's, it's going, it's a back and forth uh, movement. Um, I will now quote uh, somebody else who's also being a very formative, uh, I'll just quote the last two paragraphs um, of Arte Hierkant, the image object post-internet. And then I'll stop quoting, wrap up what the lectures are about, and give over to Turka as, uh, um, as the first speaker. Um, Arti Fierkans, the image object post internet, was probably um, the first um, treatise or text that, that was uh, looking at the whole uh, post internet phenomenon and thereby it became very important uh, in the coining of the term. So, in a sense, Arti and Marisa are something like you know, um, uh, Adam and Eve of this whole post-internet uh, thing. So, Arti, in a completely different uh, language also than Marisa, writes this. Further, it marks a denigration of objects and our relationship to space. If an object before us in a gallery is only one of an infinite, infinite multitude of possible forms that object could take, its value to the viewer becomes little more than a curiosity. The viewer can judge it only by visually and conceptually relating it to every other project they are aware of by said artist and the other artists within their aesthetic community. The strategy employed by myself and others towards this physical relationship has been to create projects which move seamlessly from physical representation to internet representation, either changing for each context built with an intention of universality, or created with a deliberate irreverence for either venue of transmission. In any case, the representation through image, rigorously controlled and edited for ideal viewing angle and conditions, almost always becomes the central focus. It is a constellation of formal aesthetic quotations, self-aware of its art context, and built to be shared and cited it becomes the image object itself. So with this uh, bold claim, uh, I would like to quickly mark the three, what I call, strata of this co conference, which consists of like two parts. Uh, call and response was my idea to frame these parts instead of not saying like it's one and two. It's more of a call and response, like a musical, uh, uh, form. The idea being that today uh, will be more about trying to uh, uh, grasp a status quo and to formulate questions on this idea, <coughs> questions to be uh, uh, taken to the speakers who will come uh, in November and maybe answer or expand on them, which is uh, the response part. So the three strata that I identified as the, the uh, parts of this conference is, uh, that I'm, I'm very interested in is one is something that I would call the materiality of the virtual. What sounds like a contradiction in terms is something that this lifestyle that includes so much internet activity of course has, a, uh, has an influence on like the objects we use. You know, I've mentioned smartphones before, and it's a kind of a, a funny setup that I have my notes on the computer, and so now we're having like two computers here, uh, like a 
sandwich uh, situation. But it, it kind of shows that suddenly, you know, like if you need all of these computers, you need all of the stuff that, that uh, the computers are, uh, are made of. Uh, you also need... Uh, um, oh. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, is that there's also some seats here as well. Um, so, there's a whole different concept of working uh, with materials that expands from like materials used in computers and mobile phones. The whole uh, situation about uh, resources, rare earths that are used inside uh, mobile phones, coltan exploitation in the Congo, etc. and so forth. Um, uh, that, that's one part, but of course there's a co whole complete difference in, uh, in uh, dealing with materials you know, that has to do with that uh, you don't have to, uh, um, you, you, can, you can just order them online, right? You can design them online, you can personalize your sneakers, you can have every t-shirt uh, uh, design you like, and um, uh, so, so it's something that uh, in a show uh, in uh, Münster, Susanne Pfeffer called uh, speculations on anonymous materials. Um, so this is uh, one aspect, the materiality of the virtual, what is the effect that this uh, increasing amount of virtual life has on the way that we look at materials. And I'm not only speaking of artist materials, it's, it's every kind of uh, material. The second point, uh, this harks also back of course to the image object that Arti Kierkan describes, is uh, the erotics of the digital imagery. Uh, the erotics of the digital imagery, I think, uh, have changed uh, incredibly. I mean, you know, like, uh, uh, it's so funny if you look at, um, uh, if you, you know, like, one of the nice things of age is, of aging is that you, you're familiarized uh, with different qualities of pornography. And so from the idea of pornography being something like a really crappy little image that's, you know, shown to you in secrecy or that you would probably consume in, in secret, secrecy at your uh, leisure to having this kind of, um, you know, public access all of the time to any form uh, of pornography. So, uh, not only pornography, pornography is only one part of, of this, because uh, um, in a sense uh, the whole aspect of uh, gamification and commercialization of the web has indeed created a whole pornography of its own. Everything is there at every moment uh, and at your disposal. The erotics of the digital imagery so, is, is another one, and it has to do with the quality of an image that is there, but it's also not there. And it's only it becomes manifest and quite often deeply disappointing the moment you print it. The moment it enters the real world, it's just a regular image. But the moment it hits you, it's on your screen and you flick through it, you consume it very fast and you send it and share it, um, it, it becomes something different, something very slippery and something that's, you know, there and not there at the same time. And I think that's a, that's a very, uh, um, I think that's a, a truly erotic uh, quality. So that's part of, part of a, it sounds contradictory, uh, something uh, starting from pornography and ending up in, in, in uh, eroticism. But I think this contradiction is something that we um, uh, have to deal with. But maybe this contradiction also has something to do with the speed and the universal availability of things that are characteristic for how we can uh, use the internet. And the third thing, the third strata I call clickbait and spam, and in the blink of an eye, referring to basically the speed and the circulation of ideas, concepts uh, online, and how uh, to uh, relate to them. Um, yeah, with this I would like to, yeah, so these were basically like uh, uh, my uh, key uh, ideas that I presented uh, um, to um, the speakers. I would just give a, a short introduction um, of, of, uh, of the speakers. Um, 
I've already mentioned uh, Toke Lückeberg, whom uh, I'm, I'm very happy uh, uh, to have here. Uh, not only because of, for filling in for Marisa Olsen, because <laughs> it's, it's, it's mainly because uh, uh, one of the um, uh, one of the very important exhibitions that uh, approached this post-internet uh, subject was a show that took a, a co-curated in curated or co-curated that's a co-curated co uh, in in Paris called co-workers the network as artists and I think. Um, the word co-worker or co-workers is already like a fantastic uh, starting point uh, because of course it relates to the way how you know working or, co or working has become co-working but actually co-working is also not only working with your co-workers but also working with the uh, industry that you are using yeah? so, so when you're using Google tools to co-work then you're not only working for each other, you're also work, working for Google yeah, because you're producing uh, uh, content that they're again using. Or, you know, like Facebook is, is, the, uh, is, is a, a similar. And so I'm very, very happy that, that you're going to expand your um, ideas on this. I'm also very happy that you will also uh, pick up a little bit on uh, Marisa Olson's uh, uh, work. And then, uh, I'm also very happy that we have uh, another uh, uh, um, curator, but also artist, um, uh, writer and uh, singer, Boris Andreischka over here, who will uh, perform his uh, litany on ether um, afterwards. Uh, Boris is a, um, a curator at uh, Thyssen Bonnemitzer Art Contemporary in Vienna and has been uh, like uh, very active but at Thyssen Bonavitsa he curated an exhibition called uh, Rare Earth and his litany on ether is actually an extent, expansion on ideas articulated uh, in this uh, exhibition. Uh, I'm also very happy that uh, Emeric Monceau is joining us today. Uh, Emeric um, is uh, someone whom um, this is really exciting, you know, like being invited to make a concert conference, it's like, uh, you know, it's Christmas. You, you just run around like a madman and you say, oh, I want that and that. And, and so I'm uh, very happy that I finally managed to meet Emmerich, who, who, about whose work uh, at um, Pete's Wart, mainly, I've been, I've been uh, hearing a lot. And uh, he, uh, because he is uh, leading a course there called uh, uh, experimental publishing, which is based on the idea that, of course, everybody is becoming like a publisher of themselves on platforms such as Facebook. So, and it's not only, so this again poses lots of questions. If you, if you become, if you are a publisher by default, if you join these things, that's of course a different idea of publicity or audience than we are used to if we look at this idea of you know, making work public as an artist, yeah? because before, like the, the the old school way to make a thing public is you, you put it into an exhibition, and um, now you know, like you're constantly producing a much bigger audience for the things you're generating online. But at the same time, you are limited to only being able to publicize specific things. So, Emmerich will. Uh, talk uh, later about publishing in the post era and the revitalization of activism in network art practices. Um, also, I'm very happy to have uh, somebody whom, whom uh, I've just shaken his hand, uh, Alessandro Ludovico, uh, just made it in time. He is somebody I came across through books like uh, with fantastic titles like Google Will Eat Itself, Amazon Noir and uh, Face to Facebook. Um, I can only uh, 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 recommend to look into these projects because they're uh, really uh, amazing. Um, they, they went through, through the news. Um, I just found, uh, um, uh, well, anyway, that's, that's, I, I'm, I'm starting to talk about stuff that I found online, right? So I'm not going to do that. 
Um, so Alessandro uh, uh, Ludovico is, uh, will be joining us uh, with, with a talk uh, on looking for the boundless book, The Finite, Infinite Space and Artists' eBooks. And last but not least, I'm also uh, very excited because for me that's also something I just realized that the last time I was on Twitter was in 2009 and um, uh, I don't know if this disqualifies me for being um, the person with on, you know, doing a program like this. <laughs> so the last time I was on uh, 2000, it was on 2009 and when Hannah suggested she wants to do um, uh, a Twitter project, um, I said, fantastic, but how do we do it? How does it work? I, I, I had literally forgotten I couldn't use Twitter anymore. Um, so, but it's not that complicated. So, uh, Hannah unfortunately is ill as well. Instead of doing a Twitter performance on site, she will do the Twitter performance off site. So, actually, we will have a screening of her lecture or of her presentation in tweets happening as the last part of this presentation before we go into the panel and uh, discuss uh, what, what we've heard, hopefully. Um, so you'll also be welcome to uh, uh, comment if you're on Twitter. I don't know, can you comment if you're not on Twitter? I think you probably have to be on Twitter, right? I don't know. Yeah. So, that's what we have for you. Uh, usually, pretty much this thing goes that there'll be... Uh, um, there's, like on the back, we, we, we have a schedule, we'll try to, to stick to this schedule uh, to, uh, to some degree. So I have uh, I put in lots of time for short coffee breaks. The coffee will be uh, served over, um, over there. And um, after the panel, you'll need to give us like 10 minutes to fix the room and, and set up the food. And then you're, you're welcome to, to stay in and, uh, and discuss. And with this, uh, oh yeah, the, the presentations will be about half an hour in length and then there's time for like quick uh, immediate uh, presentation related questions. So you're welcome to ask these questions uh, afterwards. So um, yeah, so now you know what you've got yourself into. Uh, with this I would like to uh, give the word to uh, Tuka. And yeah, fantastic having you here.